the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth how accurately handling the word of truth the unique dispensation of the church age that we are going through is of a very great importance dear brethren this church age will not return again this church age after the rapture will not come back again this time that we are going through in the period of our lacanic catastrophes is of a very great true one for us and in second corinthians 121 and 22 we have a lot many lessons to be learned concerning the ministry of lord god the holy spirit he that establishes us with you in christ and has anointed us is god who has also sealed us and given the earnest of the spirit in our hearts in the book of acts there are four supernatural manifestations which accompanied the reception of the spirit to form the body of christ in addition of jews in acts chapter 2 samaritans in acts chapter 8 the gentiles what are we acts chapter 10 and a remnant of john's disciples in acts chapter 19 the body which is being now formed and all believers now have their part in it it is the folly to expect a duplicate of this beginning manifestations on verse 2 on our verses in second corinthians summarize the various operations of the ministry of lord god the holy spirit in four different phases by him we are established in christ we are anointed we are sealed and we have been given the earnest of the guarantee of the spirit dear brethren what a great lesson we need to learn we are established in christ by the ministry of the baptism of lord god the holy spirit by the regeneration of new birth and by the renovation of our thinking as we go through in first peter 1:23 and john 6:63 tells for us the great lesson the anointing work of lord god the holy spirit in 1 john 2:27 so that we can learn the reality of the word the sealing ministry of lord god the holy spirit so that none could perish and everyone having been this seal will be saved saith our lord and the seal is in ephesians 4:31 for us the ministry of lord god the holy spirit and the earnest of the deposit in our hearts in ephesians 1:13 and 14 so that by this little deposit we need to learn the many things in Christ through the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and furthermore through this deposit it has been made known for us to understand with this simple deposit we have been given the whole bible to learn and then just imagine when we go back to heaven what are the reserved of spiritual blessings and spiritual data of that in our lord has given to us to be communicated dear brethren what a great lesson we need to learn the body the church has already been formed and therefore the baptism of lord god the holy spirit is not something that the people should sought but prayed not even prayed for or tarried for because you are been baptized by the spirit to that one body when you believe in the lord and savior jesus christ therefore dear brethren if it is for a believer to believe that even if it is and it is for a past teacher as well to look and to understand that their hard work that their fatigue that their weariness to go over come the hindrances in their spiritual life is to be done in according with the energy working in us the energy of lord god the holy spirit in action to the inherent power for the ability to reach maximum glorification for christ do not waste your life in thinking i have not had been baptized with the spirit i have not speaking in tongues i am in not doing miracles or healings therefore holy spirit is not in me no lord god the holy spirit because of him only 
Lord. You can call our Lord God the Father as Lord. And you can call the works pertaining to realization that He indwells in us as we dwell in Him because of His Spirit, saith 1 John 4.13. Because of His Spirit, we call our Father. Because of this Spirit, we are being sealed and we are being redeemed unto the day of redemption. Because of the Spirit, we have everything for us to learn from Bible doctrine. Because of this Lord God, the Holy Spirit permanently indwelling in us, we have a new assurance, new security, new deposit for us so that we should be established, so that we should be anointed, so that we should be sealed. Anointed in the sense, don't take in any other manner, but anointed in the sense, you have been given this mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to learn the Word, to apply the Word, to get back to the reality of the Word. And that is what you and I have been given and sealed, secured, and above all, we have been given the earnest of the deposit of the Spirit. What else do we require in this world than the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, from saving grace till to the point of dying grace? Because even though in the middle we get living and logistical grace, followed by the other two aspects of the point, which tells to us very clearly, number one, super grace, number two, ultra super grace. These two things, even the living logistical grace, the right from the saving grace, even the last when we go for ultimate sanctification after our death, even and that dying, dying grace is purely by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Above all, He has given us the completed canon of Scripture. Above all, He has given the right pastor teachers before us, so that who have rightly divided the word of the Lord as per dispensations, by following their footsteps. We need to come and explore by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the truth, and explain the truth, so that the truth can stand forever and forever. And when though you do it or not, truth will stand forever and forever. Lord judges you at the judgment seat of Christ according to his word, whether you have done it or not. He doesn't judge by the deeds that you have done. And that's why we find in Isaiah 53, he shall judge according to the righteous one, not by the things that he looks. People want the things to be done as per their look. But our Lord looks in a righteous manner. In a righteous manner, His word is only righteous. If the righteousness of Lord protects the very essence of God, then the justice of God also works in the protection of the great divine justice of Lord God Almighty, which is nothing but the attributes of my Lord. If righteousness could be met, then the justice has to protect all those things. Dear brethren, we are in a very grace period. Let us glorify our Lord to the maximum by the daily intake of Bible doctrine. Believing you have been baptized by the Spirit. Not agonizing, crying, weeping and wailing and thinking that I have been demon possessed because of not baptism of the Holy Spirit as some morons want to tell. You have been baptized into the great royal family of God by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit itself at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. And you are not going to go anything further from that. No need to sort, no need to weep, no need to pray, no need to even toil for it. It is by the Spirit itself you have been baptized into that great royal family, and there is no other family apart from this church. So, we, dear brethren, ponder over these things, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, since the wind is too strong. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ. That is the moment itself we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and we shall be saved. And whereas for the believer the great manner is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine so that you shall learn to know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And whereas for the pastor teacher the great manner is to carry so thon lagan, herald the word in season or out of season. Because of the diamond my witnesses wherewith they have been called. The great diamond my witnesses nothing but in willing trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. We do not have any other thing than that. We need to look upon truth, truth, truth. And Lord God the Holy Spirit only takes the truth to preach. So number one witnesses will be our Lord God the Holy Spirit and the truth will be the completed can of scripture given in our hands, the mystery doctrine of the church age. And furthermore, we do have some more things to take care, and that is what the witnesses. If there are no witnesses to hear the word of the Lord that we have preached, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses, but our duty is to rightly divide the word of truth, not worrying about the softies as such where we are and where we are going, but to be worried whether we are reaching from glory to glory or not, from spiritual self-esteem to spiritual autonomy, and then to spiritual maturity. And it is better for us to stay in a simple 
simple mansions and to eat little food. It, it is better to stay for us into simple cottage, not mansions, and to eat little food rather than staying in large mansions and to be without Christ and eating great food. That's what I meant to say, exchanging the glory of Lord for a lie. Let the truth be as it is. Explain the truth as it is. Do not worry about your money. Do not worry about your income. Do not worry about your the ecclesiastical displeasure. Do not worry about the fellow man ostracism. But we need to worry about only one thing. Have we glorified Christ or not today? Have we given the maximum glorification to our Lord by the true mentor, ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit or not? That is what we need to worry and nothing else than that. Because Lord knows before you could open your mouth and ask to Him, He will provide you abundantly, exceedingly, above all that you can ever ask, imagine or think. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, grateful for the privilege that I was given to fellowship with through the word. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit land us on these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in question, Father. Amen.